All right, you guys, check this out here. See, that is a cool hideaway hitch. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how we got to this point and how it's so nicely hidden. Uh, so stay tuned. Watch the rest of the video. You'll see how the process of getting to this really cool receiver in your bus with... Either this hitch here or the straight one with a solid end. How they just slide right in, take it out, hide it. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we're going to do a part one on this uh, trailer hitch. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to put these all in the same video yet. Maybe we will. Um, cause then it makes it a little bit easier for you guys who are looking to do this. Uh, but, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the problems with this and then maybe you'll understand why it is we do, we're doing what we're doing to make it work. Uh, one of the issues with your Volkswagen is you always have your muffler. Some sort of muffler is going to be in the back. Either you're going to have dual exhaust or you're going to have the, uh, single, uh, quiet pack. Whatever it is, it's always right here in the middle. And uh, with with the VW bus, it's really a challenge because you're going to have your hitch way down super low if you put it below the muffler. Or if you put it up here, you know, you may not have enough support or areas to hold it. So uh, I'm going to kind of walk you guys through what we had figured to do. So we'd been discussing this for a few hours and came up with this idea. Okay, there's a couple of different things we were thinking about. We were thinking about making an L bracket right here that went underneath these mount bolts for the bumper. And this is a pretty sturdy frame-like material. It's not really frame, but it would hold a lightweight trailer. Um, and I would hope you're not going to pull anything heavy with your VW bus. They just really don't have uh, enough, you know, cooling system and engine to pull something heavy. You know, like a car or something like that, um, I wouldn't recommend doing. They just they just don't have enough frame underneath them for something, a real heavy trailer, like a Type 3 hitch. So uh, we're going with a Type 1 hitch, uh, which is uh, the smaller hitch. We have one here. Let's see. I have a receiver. So I went ahead and bought a receiver because I didn't really want a ball sticking out all the time. I'm not sure if this is the way to go yet or not. Um, you have to hang out, wait till the end, and see if that's what we're going to use. But um, what we're hoping to get is have this about, say, right here. It might stick out a little bit, but uh, in comparison to the ball, which you'd always be banging your kneecap on, uh, that might be a little bit better on your kneecaps than the ball. So, and you can slide your ball in and out of this. These are Type 1 receivers. Um, they have these on Amazon. Uh, when I got mine, these were $13.99, um, and, or you can go to Harbor Freight and they actually sell a conversion one for about the same and you can just cut off the piece you need. So they have a one that goes from a type three to a type one and it's about the same price. So you could just cut it off if you didn't want to wait for Amazon. And those are made by Kurt. So what we're trying to do is we figured there's a lot of different options with VW buses. Um, and not all these brackets are always going to be the same bend, but most of them are pretty close. I've, I've found that these particular black brackets versus the Wolfburg West ones are slightly bent up too far right here. So right here, they're bent up just a little bit too far and makes your bumper a little bit. If you notice, this bumper is a little bit like that. And some guys put washers in. Uh, to try and level it out, but you know, these are about, I guess, about fifteen dollars, and the Wolfsburg West ones are like twenty nine or something like that each. So uh, I went with these because I just didn't want to spend the money for something that simple um, that I wasn't really worried about my bumper being a little bit off, uh, being out of being out of level. So, um, but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna mimic this bend right here with a tubing, with square tubing. So what we did 
here is um, instead of cut, cutting all four sides, we went ahead and, and cut out, notched out the areas we wanted and then bent the pipe so it's in the right position you want. So you end up with a really wide gap to weld up here, but it's a whole lot easier to try and, you know, make a make a, make some cuts in here. You know, you see that this one's straight and this one's at an angle. So if you figure the pipe was going this direction, we just cut this one at an angle and then this one was cut straight. So we made a straight cut, a notch in the, uh, just basically a, 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 a straight cut in the pipe and then the next one would, would be just like this if you look. Goes at an angle, one goes straight. One at an angle, one goes straight. And then you bend it so we're gonna mimic this same piece for both sides. And then this will go, I don't know if it goes this direction or the other. I don't know, I just picked it up. So it goes like this. Okay, so that's actually upside down. <laughs> Let's see, it goes like that inside the arm so this is one and a half outside diameter square tubing pretty thick wall stuff you look it's like about eighth of an inch thick almost maybe hundred thousandths so um but that's the metal we're going with on that so we're going to mimic those two bins right here and right here and then if you see here there's a natural gap right here underneath the bumper. So we're gonna run the same, probably the same square tubing if it fits, uh, all the way from here over to that side over there. And then I we were discussing whether, we're not sure yet, but we may end up bolting this on to this part by using uh, probably onto this tubing here by using, uh, we may put nut certs in, uh, welded nut certs and uh and bolt it in with some pretty good sized bolts or welding it together we haven't decided that part yet uh, but if we have it bolted together we figure that it would work on uh, other buses or whatever kind of work as a universal type setup so what that does is that because that's above the bumper line okay it's above the bumper line right here it actually uh doesn't interfere with any of the mufflers. So you could almost run any muffler you wanted with this type of a hitch. And it's a one and a half inch square tubing above. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put a tab on there, on this part right here, to go on top of the bumper, okay? We're actually, uh, it's actually gonna be a tab going this way. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna end out, but we're gonna have the, the uh, thing go right here. And then we're gonna put the receiver below it and we're going to actually not either you could run bolts through here to and use your so that you'll have the strength of your bumper and the additional brackets or we'll just put a make it so it clamps on the bumper and doesn't have to drill any holes in it so that's the kind of setup that i want to put on here um, to where it'll clamp on it and then you'll have that e extra strength from the bumper which isn't that strong but it is nice to have a little bit extra strength there and and still have the extra tubing. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put longer bolts in here and run those all the way through. And then that extra metal between this and the square tubing will strengthen up this frame area here and actually make that a pretty strong area of the, you know, carry that weight a little bit easier. So then I, after we're all done, we can bolt the bumper, bolt the, the muffler back on. And, you know, taking out the muffler would just make it easier to work and see everything. But we wanted to leave everything assembled so we'd know what we're doing. Now, the thing that's cool about that is, again, you can drop your engine out pretty easily with the bumper on. Or you can actually just go ahead and take your four bolts out, pull the rear apron off and the, and the back bumper with the hitch all in one piece pretty much and it wouldn't be that much of a challenge when you're removing the engine so that's almost always an issue with most of the hitches that you've seen a lot of them go underneath the bus and actually connect 
you know, up to that frame or something like that to the, the I think they connect to these horn here and stuff and they end up under the engine and it becomes quite a challenge sometimes to take it off to go remove the engine. So that was another issue that I wanted to solve. So anyway, uh, this is how we're doing this. Uh, and we'll, I don't know if we'll get a video of it step by step, but at least uh, with that explanation, we'll see the beginning and the end and then see what changes were made um, along the way. So I'll talk to you in the next video. Uh, make sure you comment. Uh, we really appreciate comments and uh, it really helped the video. Got these cut and welded in place or welded. They're just taped in place so that we can figure out what we're going to do next. We're actually going to put some metal plate on the bottom here and then have another tube that goes between the bumper on each side. Um, it's kind of a hideaway bumper system, uh, hitch system. So, And then it's all going to bolt sandwich together once we get the uh, correct bolts here in this drilled uh, sandwich together up here to also help strengthen the bumper. Um, so anyway, that's how we're going on that. That's progress. We're going to go ahead and cut this tube right here. We already cut this tube to 36 inches. I'm going to hang on, watch the rest of the video. I'm going to probably draw up the plans and put them on here when we get all done. But we're trying to still figure it out as we go. We initially started making these things here um, to actually fit underneath these brackets. And then we ended up with a little bit of a gap because it's really hard to get the same exact bends uh, as the original. But um, as long as it goes from point A to point B, okay, like this, we could have a different bend right in here. And what you could do is use these, what we're going to do, is we're going to use these here to eliminate these bumper brackets. So um, what we're going to do is actually use... Uh, these make these like this and then make that plate right there out of steel since we have steel it's easy to do just uh, weld it like that and then lop the ears off to make it shaped so that it fits in there like this right here so that's the kind of thing we're going to do I think we're just going to do that and then the bumper will be bolted onto that. And then, but you need the brackets in order to make these. You couldn't just make that shape and make it fit without the brackets. So, um, but then we'll paint them black. And other than having these things line up for your plates here, um, that won't be an issue on this bus. I don't even have those um, for your, your guards or whatever. Um, so you could either, either just not put that little bolt in there or uh, find a different way to mount them. Do a nut cert. Do a nut cert. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it around it with that. But actually, you'd have to, you could actually just drill, if you were going to do that, you could actually just use a stair step drill and drill right a big hole right here and so that you can get your socket in there and actually, you know, put that one, put that one on. It actually goes on from underneath, I believe. All right. So on these here, we took just some square tubing we had laying around and uh, made it so that they're inside here so that when you tighten it down, it doesn't squeeze. So here's the mock-up. We just set this in. Uh, we actually made these plates here to replace the bumper brackets. And from the top, you can't tell when they're painted black. That looks like factory, except for we're going to have that little bracket on there. Uh, which you'll see later on in the video But yeah, we're also gonna probably put um, a Plate over this area to to strengthen these Parts where it's bent down just a piece of plate over the top of that to make it a little stronger and Then there's plenty of room for even this style muffler to put the part where it goes down and then out so uh, the trickiest part is getting enough of leverage in there because uh, we're gonna we want to put a little piece of square tubing right here to kind of reinforce it. You'll see it later on. 
All right, so here's what we ended up with on the middle. This ends up being right below the bumper. Uh, we used some square tubing, the same stuff as this here. And then this is a piece of plate here that we put on the sides, plate here, and then strengthened it by putting these on here. Um, maybe more than some of you guys need to do, but um, so, you know, you can never do too much when it's a trailer hitch. Yeah, I, I'm never intending to pull anything that heavy with this, so, um, but you never know what if I, I could probably with this thing, I could almost think I could almost drag the bug to a show, but you know, I'm not going to say that, that it's strong enough for that. It's not rated for anything. It wouldn't be rated for something like that. But, uh, yeah, so, um, so we put another piece back here, so, uh, to the potential twisting of this, uh, it may not be needed, but, uh, it depends on what, how far you want to go with it. Um, you could actually probably get away with just putting the square tubing in here and then just putting the other things on there and then making that work. But it's just, like I said, how far are you going to go? What are you going to pull? All that, you know, so these still need to be welded. Uh, and then, uh, we're actually going to, these are all drilled and we put the square tubing inserts in them. Just use a stair strip drill bit. Uh, like the ones from Harbor Freight, if you know what those are, it just, it drills multiple size holes all with one drill bit. And uh, we drilled some holes in there, put the square tubing inside, welded it. Um, you may not even need to weld that, but it just depends on, like I said, how you how far you want to go with it. So you can do it that way. This side's done the same. These are just made. So now it just replaces the bumper brackets. Here's what we ended up with here. Ah, uh, so you got here, we got the extra metal here on the side. So we made those pieces like you saw in the plans. You're going to see here shortly. And then we added this piece of steel on top just because of those cuts there and they're welded. Figured double it up a little bit. And put a piece of plate on the bottom of this piece okay and then use that plate to bolt the center section on which goes behind the muffler this would work just without about any muffler let's take a look on this side from over here you can see it better it goes like this and then you can see where this is just to the edge of the bumper behind here and then there isn't a terrible amount of clearance there, but just enough. Uh, if you're going to run a different type of muffler, you'd probably have to have something a little bit different here. But um, then you got a receiver, and let's look at how that looks. It looks really clean. Kind of tucks behind the bumper. A little bit. It's got to get painted still. And everything probably black so it just hides and you hardly even notice that there's a hitch on this thing so then same thing over here the reinforcement piece here um, to reinforce where it was cut here and rewelded this should be strong enough I mean this hitch is stronger than the frame that it's bolted to so that's what I'm saying. You, you may not go this far, but you, you, you might. You know, it depends on what you want to do. Put an extra piece of square tubing here for twisting. Um, which, again, not you, that you may or may not need. But we just put it on there for the heck of it. And then this is all steel plate back here. So there's a quarter inch steel plate here. You've got a square, smaller square tubing up above and a larger square of tubing below and then steel plate on each end and then you have these two pieces of steel here we still need to just put on the uh, safety chain hooks um, and that's it but uh, you can see that that's pretty well like a hideaway hitch system it's 
not noticeable at all. You could still bolt the the mud trays in the back if you wanted to. And uh, you just have a little bit of, you probably have to put like a nut cert in here because it's a nut and bolt. I looked at my other bus and it's a nut and bolt here. So, and they overlap a little bit in here. So, but you put the bolt on section in here, you'll probably never take this off. So like if you're going to pull the engine and you want to pull your uh, bumper off, you just pull it, you just take it off right here like you normally would do. Just take those four bolts off, pull the whole section, that'll pull the hitch and everything off. So we got a long tongue, uh, then we have a stair step one. We don't know exactly the height of the trailer yet, um, and that will be in the future videos. We're going to be doing a trailer build coming up, uh, custom trailer build. It's not going to be like anything you've ever seen. And uh, so keep your eyes open for that. But yeah, if you wanted to build one of these, uh, I'll go ahead and add the plans in now, the basic plans of what you're doing um, other than it just doesn't have on it the plates. Um, and you use the plates again. You mount those, you weld those to the bottoms of here. I mean, you could have put this going straight across here if you wanted to. You can make it more hideaway, but it doesn't matter as long as it works. So it looks really cool. It's really, um, it's really tucked behind the bumper really nice. So you can't see this. So there's nothing low. The ones I was looking at, I was going to make one that was going to go down and go below the engine and then it comes down and then swoops back up into the back. But it gets pretty low to the ground. Um, that's how the original one was. It went down like this, went across here and back up on the other side, bolted underneath the bumper brackets and it was really low and then it came back up underneath the muffler. So. Every time you wanted to work on your muffler, you're going to have all these problems. This thing is totally out of the way and super clean and tight. So, like no other hitch you've ever seen. All right, so I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. All right, so let's take a look here at what this is like on the plans. I want to talk to you guys through this a little bit. If we're going to make one of these. Um... So depending on which exhaust system you had, you will depend on where you're going to set this bar. So you can put this bar a little bit further back or a little bit further forward than we put it. Um, if you're trying to, or and you can also change the parts that are between the hitch. And you, know, well, you can't really see what I'm talking about from here, but between the hitch and this this crossbar, the 36 inch crossbar. Um, you can't really, you can change that to change the height and the depth as well. But just so you know, we had a quarter inch steel plate here. Then we had another one of these stacked on top of here, or actually we didn't have one of these. We had another piece of smaller steel stacked and then we had another one of these uh, one and a half inch uh, bar so everything here is one and a half inch square tube everything we used on the sides and on the back is all one and a half inch tube and uh, on this this what you have to do is basically take your brackets off and mimic the same uh, you know shape it's not hard to do you just cut a groove here and then if you can see actually we cut a groove going this way and then cut a pie piece and then left this what it left this attached and then cut a pie piece out and bent um i don't know you can kind of see what i'm talking about you just cut a pie piece out and then bend it and then fill it back in and then do the same down here so you cut it, you leave one side attached, and then you just bend it, the last side. And then uh, on this part, um, this is a half inch or a quarter inch steel plate that we used. 
and then we use that um, and then the bolts actually go through like that so they go through the parts and that what that does is that enables you to put this piece in because with the muffler in there um, you'd have to take the muffler off to be able to get this piece in place so but um, it just kind of makes it easier and you can loosen up these bolts and then make it easier to line up these bolts here so if you remember inside of this uh, where the bolts are we actually put spacers in and then weld them in place you may not may or may not have to weld them in place but you have to put spacers in so that you don't crush the tubes every time you tighten down the bolts so we put spacers in there they're basically we took uh, one inch or one inch uh, square tubing is what we had laying around and we just put them inside and then welded them in and it gave it a little bit of wiggle room because we use seven sixteenths bolts to um, bolt this together and then replace the 10 millimeter bolts up here with 7 16 and then we put another bracket and another 7 16 bolt from the side so we actually have up here on this end a little ear with a bolt like that okay so and these were all using factory holes there was a hole right here already so we just put a tab on there made it line up with the other and so it bolts from the underneath and it bolts one from the side so you have a little bit more um, strength and then after we were done with this we took a piece of quarter inch steel plate and put it right here on the outside of here so kind of have to back up the video a little bit watch the other sections of it and you might have to, to figure it all out, um, but I'm pretty sure you could use these to try and figure out how to make one for yourself if you really like the way this looks. I mean, it, it you don't even notice the bus has a hitch on it. It just has a little square thing, and then once it's all painted, you won't even notice that at all. So in the back, if you this is the rear view, um, we had, I think it was a one-inch square tubing piece here. And then a one and a half inch square tubing piece here. And then you have a receiver. We just welded that right below it. And that ended up being the right height. Okay, so that's how that stacked up there. And of course, we plated both sides of that with half inch steel. And I think one this side with half inch steel as well. Just to make it a little bit stronger. And then gusseted, you saw the two pieces that were right here. Um, I think we probably should have made those with flat steel going this direction and put the holes in them for the hit for the, that's what I was, if I was watching when that was going on, that's what I was said to do is put them this direction and then put the holes for the, uh, hit or the, uh, what do they call it? Safety chains right there, which they could be used right now with, for the safety chains. We could just use some of those screw on little dangling things there and whatever they are and use it that way so anyway that's it for the hitch um well if you i'll just kind of work through this set of plans so you guys can look at this stop the video again rewind watch sections of it um you could probably figure out everything we did and then uh, make one for yourself have a nice hideaway hitch system for your bus that's you don't even notice is on the thing so it looks really neat i i just hate that look of the ugly looking ball in the back you know i mean musty one made a great video of using used parts that's one thing he's really good at is using used parts um this was all remnant stuff too so we didn't go out and just pay big money for the steel this was all just remnant parts we used to make this so i mean probably if we wanted to go and buy all the stuff we could have got a little bit fancier and made it nicer, but it's it's as nice as I'd ever know, want it to be. And again, on the back of this, we used, I think it was a half inch or one inch, half inch, I believe, square tubing. And reinforced this section, which again, I don't think would be completely necessary to do. 
but if you want to do it because really where the failure is going to be is in the frame of the bus I'm not going to twist there really i don't think but anyway just some food for thought we'll take one more look at this whole hitch system i noticed when i was talking last time uh, when i made some of the parts of the video um it uh you can see everything it's really kind of hard to film this and see it so you see here we had this little ear with these here okay and then we double stack the metal here then in the bottom you can see there's two bolts down here that go through that section that goes across okay then you've got the plates what we did is we just took the old plates and just traced them with some with some uh I guess it's 100,000 steel. I don't know. It was just whatever they had remnant piece. And then on the top of the hinge up here, I have to get far enough away. Um, you can see this bolts in. So there's two bolts here. And again, those have spacers inside. Like I was showing um, back here. Again, the same thing. I have to have this up where I can't <laughs> I can't see what's going on in the camera that's why it's really hard to take this video so in the back let's take a look here how nice that looks really clean okay let's look at this from far away and you can see and again on this side there was the same thing what we had is there's actually a factory hole right here and we didn't use the 7 16s here. We used the 10 millimeter from the old. And then these here we put in with the 7 16 larger bolts. And these are 7 16 to, um, you could use 12 millimeter if you wanted to, but really the 7 16 was kind of a happy medium. It, it went into the same holes. So we didn't have to drill anything in on the bus. So, Back here again, um, this is, I said half inch, it's actually quarter inch steel plate. This is quarter inch steel plate here to use to fill the holes at the end of the tubes. And then um, this is another quarter inch piece we just pieced on down here. Again, I would have probably turned that sideways and put the holes in there for the, uh, made them kind of come down. We may end up cutting them off and then redoing that and putting this going this right it would gusset it this way and then it would just have a hole from if we just cut these off right here and then mounted it this way and then put a hole in here and a hole in here then it would it would still hold that what carry that weight and it would have a hole in here for your uh safety chain so yeah i'll have to have a meeting on that one I think tomorrow but um, not a big deal it really easy to cut that off and fix it but um, kind of had to explain what I wanted done I was doing something else when this was going on then there again this piece here is an extra strength here same thing over there I'll get up a little bit further away again remember this thing bolts in the back now you can't take this off very easily with the muffler on, but you can easily just unbolt the three bolts on each side here, one, two, three, um, and remove the bumper, and then take this off here and here, if you wanted to pull the engine. Um, actually, you really don't need to do that to pull the engine. You can actually pull the engine without removing this, but you know, some guys like to remove that whole back half and just slide it straight back on the bus. It's a lot easier, but it doesn't really uh, change that that much. So anyway, that's how that looks. I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, make sure you comment. Uh, we really like comments. Really will, will help the video uh, be found by other people who are looking for the same type of thing. Talk to you. Thanks for watching.